from ARA. Um, and so I invited them to come and share with all of you the great work that they're doing in the extrovert of this group. However, we, we, aren't, we don't hear terribly well, um, so if you'd just like to speak loudly and clearly into the microphone, it would be really helpful. Kia ora koutou, can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> My name is Sandra Moore and I am the Stakeholder Engagement Manager for the Southern Campuses for Ada Institute of Canterbury. And today I've got two colleagues with me. I've brought Kevin Clark and Stephanie Collins. Stephanie Collins is based here locally and Stephanie is uh, part of our youth and community engagement team, so she travels around southern campuses engaging youth and community. And then Kira is based in our Christchurch campus, she manages staff right across the southern campuses in the student transition space, so that comes off our careers department. So that is uh, why she's here to have a chat with us today as well. So we'll kick off into some slides, give you a bit of an overview of R, and then we'll talk about. Um, Specific, some, some information specific to Ashburton, uh, to the campus there, and then we will uh, hand over to Heather to talk about the Career Service Department. I understand that there's quite a few roles available here for possibly for our students, so we would love to show you uh, how we can help incorporate those, uh, advertising those roles to our students. <coughs> and then finally, I would like to discuss with you some stakeholder engagement management. So without further ado, we shall kick off. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Thank you. And thank you for the, for the welcome. So, um, ARA means in Māori, pathway or journey. And as we are all aware, not only in education is that a journey, but in life. So, the Ashburton District Council has to deal with things today that were not even in existence 25 years ago. So, um, it is the largest vocational training institute in New Zealand. And as you'll see, we've got campuses in Central Christchurch, uh, which would be in Madras Street. Housed under that is the New Zealand Broadcasting School, NASDA, um, Architecture, Nursing, a whole uh, variety of programs going from level one through to level seven. Walston is a trades purpose campus. And equally in Timaru and also in Ashburton, we have trades and other offerings. Omaru is slightly more tourism um, and some hospitality. So we train more than 19,000 students every year. So that's not just full-time students, that's also part-time students. Um, it could be someone coming in for liquor licensing, which I know the council also uh, works in partnership with us on that. Um, and we have, as is demanded today, a lot more online programs because people are trying to work as well as keep increasing their qualifications and their knowledge base. We specialise in education for employment. So really simply, what we do um, is bring a practical aspect to your training. So it's not just um, academic training, but we bring either work, real world experience, work placement, etc., or we simulate through our uh, organization uh, for people what it would be like to actually go and work in surgery for bed nursing, etc., or nursing. So as I mentioned, 150 qualifications, uh, right from certificates through to postgraduate degrees. So this is just a snapshot of everything that we offer. You can see it's quite comprehensive. Some are more of interest to our Ashburton community than others. But uh, I'll pass this back. So. <laughs> so here's some information specific to our Ashburton campus. So these are the current courses offered uh, specifically in the Ashburton campus. I thought that might be of interest to you all. <laughs> so we cover agribusiness, diploma in business, and which has a few different strands, and certificates in business, midwifery, beauty therapy, salon skills, hairdressing, beauty therapy, automotive, foundation skills. And one thing that I did want to address today is we do have a free bus that Ara puts on, so if there's something that a student did want to study that we aren't currently, currently 
running a cohort four here in Ashburton, they can hop on a free bus and uh, that may be delivered into the room. So we've had some really, oh, sorry, I've just got a light on here, Councillor Brown. Just have one question. Your top one there said you yeah, do agribusiness training for level five. What if you want to do level one, two, three, four? Where would you do that? Or would you do it here as well? Or is there a level one, two, three, four? Um, traditionally, we did offer that, but there wasn't enough uptake. So we've had Trevor McIntyre doing uh, some consultancy work for the last six months, uh, working in partnership with the agricultural um, industry and seeing where, what the needs are because it's no use bringing, continuing to bring to industry and to the community uh, programs that aren't relevant. So um, I am not privy, and I'm not sure if Sabra has heard yet, but there will be some announcements about what that outcome is. Um, so I've, at the moment, it's watched this space. So also to answer your question, we've partnered with the primary ITO, and they deliver that at the moment. We are in partnership with them. So we'll cover that off a little bit in a, in a later slide. So um, as for the success stories, we've got, um, we've had Michelle Brown uh, address our graduation for Southern Campus students uh, last week, which was wonderful. She came down from Methven and she had studied with us for the first time in 30 years, two children later, and she shared with us just the beauty of that polytechnic environment and being able to study around the, the um, demands of her uh, family life, so she was able to go through and she has um, successfully studied her business diploma and now she's working towards her um, Bachelor of Applied Management, which is fantastic. And then we've also had Megan Wordsworth who actually was awarded a top honour uh, for all other business students, which uh, as you can imagine that that's a very popular paper to take, and she topped the class in the communication and commercial law paper for 2017, so she was... Um, she was pretty chuffed with that, I must say. You might have seen that in the paper. And so we also, uh, we, we do a lot of cultural, uh, we celebrate cultural diversity at ARA, and uh, the picture here is of uh, some of our students last year celebrating Pacifica, and um, we have had Julia Papik uh, receiving the top student award for the paper on fundamentals and marketing last year, and she is completing her diploma in accounting. So some really, the strong messaging coming through to us um, is that business studies is very, very popular for people here in Ashburton and that is a strong part of our delivery. So we've got some videos here, so hopefully Stephanie might need to make While we're going through the technical difficulties, um, sorry, question for Sabra. Um, Sabra, when Councillor Price and I met with you, I asked about hospitality courses and the old uh, Kiwi host classes. I'm just wondering um, if you could fill in everyone on what you have in, in regards to customer service, customer training engagements. Sure. So we have retail and hospitality courses available. So. Where we're currently sitting in Ashburton, there doesn't seem to be too much demand that we can see coming through from enrolments. So what we may need to do is, and I'll be discussing this later in the piece, is the stakeholder engagement group. So if we bring together some stakeholders, they might 
really show us that there is a demand and then we can go on to getting some customer service training and then it's certainly something that we would be very much excited to discuss with you. and I contract on. I'm doing an agribusiness management course and so it's worked out really well because it ties in with everything that I need. Definitely, definitely good that I don't have to travel an hour and a half to get to my classes and you know, like I say, it's 10 minutes down the road so that makes the world of difference, especially when you've got a baby girl. If it wasn't available in Ashburton, I couldn't do the course. It just, I couldn't, I wouldn't be able to get to the classes, I wouldn't be able to do the course, so no, it's made a huge difference having it just down the road. Well, there's papers you do things at home, and then you've got classes that you go in for, and you've also got one-on-ones once a week with the tutors, so you can go in there and spend an hour with them, and they can run through the course and see how you're going and what you need to do. The first one I did was finances, and that worked out really well, because it goes through the tax, it goes through the PAYE and the GST, so you get a real good understanding of that when you're go from being employed to an employer, these are things that you need to learn that you can't actually learn any other way. And it's good because it's based on my business. So the paper, the financial paper was based around our finances for the business. It was budgeting for our business. It was following the actual figures from our business. At the moment we're doing contract milking and we're hoping to step up. We're hoping to go into you know, the share milking and we want to own our own farm. So we've got big plans, so yeah. Oh, the course is going to be perfect. It is, it is. It fits in. It gives me all the background information that I need to get ahead. So, no, it's great. Holden and I worked on a cropping farm here just out of Tamaru about North three Tamaru. years ago when I was looking for a course yeah. that I could do to further my career a wee bit. Uh, it's the Diploma in Agribusiness Management and it's basically the fundamentals of being able to run your own business. Just understanding how, how a business works and, and the actual fundamental principles of it that allowed me to, to study while I, I was working and it's, it's quite good to get the practical experience from working on a farm but also the aspects of that business side, it's course days where you go in and there sort of every month or every couple of months and it's a really good way to just touch base with everyone else who's doing that course with you and it's also really easy to you know, call up the tutors and, and, and be an email contact that sort of thing so it's really flexible and allows you to basically be as far away from town or as close to town as you want and, and still get the same same service. The best bit about the course is that the things that we are learning are actual real skills. They're not just sort of theoretical things that, that, that we won't necessarily use. They, for example, when, when we do budgeting skills that I haven't done before, I can go you know, straight back here and actually work out a budget. And it can be on any scale. It could be a polyfred cropping farm that I'm working on or, or it, could, it could be budgeting to you know, get, get more feed into the cow. So it's really practical and, and really, really easy to apply what we're learning straight to, to the work that we are doing. Thanks for having us here today. Um, and my understanding is that you're interested in finding out how employers can then engage with other students and graduates from employment. Um, so that's very much my space. It's actually very much the space of the institution. So my area is within student services and how we support students on that journey from the career development to the uh, employment transition. Um, so um, in terms of our service, we do promote all types of work opportunities to current students and recent graduates. Um, we reach a lot of students across the campuses, um, and we're interested in finding out more about the regional campus campuses and what we can do to support the space. So we're very keen to work collaboratively on that, um, and keen to look at opportunities to raise your business's profiles on campus. Um, and so there's a number of ways that we do that, but our primary tool for doing that, I must check the order of our slides, yeah. Career Hub. So Career Hub is a tool, I think we're the only polytech in the country that use Career Hub, but you're probably familiar with it, possibly familiar with it through universities. Um, and so this is where employers can register themselves as employers and then they can go on to register any jobs that they've got going. And that will go to any students who have selected um, the, the, the features in your ad, I guess, you know, with the business and they're just looking for business related jobs or trades related jobs. 
those jobs will pop up for them. So our students register with it if they're looking for work. They also um, register for other reasons so that they can uh, access resources and book in for workshops and seminars and things as well through that tool. Uh, so we get a lot of students using that. So we're very keen to drive our employers in this region to use this tool because that makes it visible to us as an institution what the employment opportunities are in this area. Uh, and in the background, some employers have been a little bit concerned about using a tool that feels a little bit anonymous, that it's going to go on there and sit there passively, not going to do anything with it. So I just want to assure you that in the background we actually work the information. So our careers team uh, receive that information, they collate it relating to programs and departments, they ensure we're pushing it out to those departments and tutors for whom it's relevant. Um, and so it's it, it's sort of it's not just a passive tool, it's our tool for actually understanding what those opportunities are, what those needs are, and looking to broker uh, engagement with them, um, potential employees. Uh, and the great thing about Ashburton is that you've actually you've got your two hundred odd uh, students here, but you've also got only an hour up the road both the Christchurch and the Timaru campuses, which is where the majority of our students are. Uh, and I think there's probably some opportunities there to profile uh, Ashburton as a destination. And I think that's, you know, from a team's perspective, it's fairly invisible to a lot of Christchurch students and graduates, just simply because people don't know what they know. And if they, if they don't know why they might move to Ashburton or why they might commute to Ashburton for job opportunities, then, um, you know, why would they? So I think there's some good opportunities there where we could profile this region. Um, to the wider student body. Can I say I'm really delighted to hear that. We have very low unemployment and we have done for a long time and we have employers eager to find staff. Um, it was just last year, myself and a few councillors met with uh, the regional manager of Ministry of Social Development and we were talking about how difficult it is to recruit and retain. Um, but really excited to hear the possibility of getting people here. Just this morning we were talking to one of our CCOs, ACR, and we were hearing that they have ongoing employment issues and trying to secure staff. When I last spoke with the dairy section of Federated Farmers, they advised that on that day, which was I think November, they had 70 job vacancies available. So we have employers desperately in need of staff. How are you engaging with those individual companies? I know in Timaru you have one agency you go to, and that is Aoraki Development, is that correct? Uh, so that's my, my role in stakeholder engagement. So I'm working with, um, with Aoraki Development, um, with Steve's team and youth and community, and then we also work in with, um, uh, with the, there's lots of different subgroups that have been set up in Timaru. So I guess why we're here today is to talk about starting those relationships here at as a new entity and we'd really like to make sure that we're branching in and keeping people abreast of developments in education and vice versa meeting your needs. <coughs> so that's a really key point for today. Thank you. Um, and you know, so Sabra brings um, information and leads to us and I was just looking at some emails today because I'm often copied into the email trail of how that's been in the background of the, the follow-up and response that's going on. So um, basically any point of contact that you have with ARA, if, if there's a job opportunity, it usually comes back through to our team and if we can coordinate that internally. Can't guarantee, obviously, um, opportunity outcomes. Sometimes it's to do with the time of the year, you need somebody at this time and we won't have a graduate flowing out, you know, graduates flowing out until a certain time of the year. Um, but the next tool I'm going to show you will um, talk to that a little bit in terms of uh, where we're heading. Sorry, just before we leave Korea Hub, have Federated Farmers told me there were 70 jobs on that day. Would Federated Farmers be the person who puts up 70 jobs or would the individual farmers each go in and manage their own vacancies? You, um, you could do either, yeah. 
And one of the things I'd encourage you to do is to, uh, the employers in the area to do is to really think about the point of difference of living here or working here and actually telling that story um, and make that really appealing. So if you're really needing people to move or be prepared to commute, then, you know, we want people to understand why that's a, you know, a worthy thing for them and that um, that's going to affect the outcomes. Um, and we have, so I've got some information here about it. I can leave it here if anybody would like a copy, how to register some instructions to, um, to engage in that. Um, uh, and just while I'm talking about that too, it's not just about employment, but a lot of employers don't know they can access interns, work experience students, um, get industry research projects done. It's um, generally speaking they're not paid internships, employers can choose to do that. But there's some fantastic opportunities where it could be I've got a little business and I need some administration done and you've got a win-win situation where a student can get some really good work experience and it could be as simple as doing the filing and a few extra things through to doing a more sort of high level industry research project or an internship um, and thinking about you know outside your industry to what might add value so while you might be a primary industry business you know, would a marketing intern or an event management intern or a you know a human resources intern be of interest to you in terms of adding value to your business? And um, so, just to think about that, you can also put those opportunities on Career Hub, or you can contact our career team and they can coordinate that internally with the relevant time. Um, um, so I've got a question. I yeah. thought it was illegal to do employ anybody without wages. I mean, they were doing it with. Um, overseas um, free campus, what was the legal You said you could employ people with no wages. So it's an internship or a work experience placement. So it's for a set, it's within specific parameters, it's within a set number of hours and a set project. So it's not a vacancy that you are putting out there and replacing with an unpaid, um, unpaid intern. It's a, added value opportunity. So your business is doing its business as usual and you're being prepared to take on an intern. Um, so it might be something you've had on your wish list but you're simply not resourced to do. So the added value is there for the student to do it. But it's not a normal, it, it's part of their study, it's part of the programme of study. So it's an exchange really. But it is for a set period of time, um, yeah, as opposed to an employment relationship. That it's part of their assessment for their programme, so they have to do it. Sorry, can I say something? Um, yeah, my son did that from the end of... Yeah, so sorry, sorry, no. No, you can't. Sorry, but we can talk about that afternoon too. I was just referring to this short, yeah. So there's some instructions on how to do it, but I won't bore you with that. I've got such a print out for that, and also if you go onto the website, you can see it as you work through. Um, through that process. So the other thing is, um, as I'm sure you're aware, employers are desperate for people who are, uh, have employability skills, soft skills, and are work ready. Uh, and you've seen in some of the slides the students talking about the applied learning that they are experiencing, and so of course they're gaining a lot of um, those soft skills uh, and experience. But in addition to that, we've looked at a tool, developing a tool for all of our students to use um, called My GPS, which is uh, an employability app. So it's an app on their phone or they can do it on the website. Um, and it works them through eight key areas from sort of informed decision making, am I on the right track for me, right through out into the transition out into employment. And the idea is that it gives them guidance to um, prepare themselves for employment. So it adds value to what they're already doing in their programs and uh, it supports the need for employers to have students who are really and graduates who are fronting up and communicating really well in the application process but also following through in the work readiness and those sorts of skills. So um, it's built on something called slacktivism, so these are the eight key areas. Uh, skills there being about soft skills or transferable skills, building experience, building connections and networks and developing your marketability. Uh, the transition out being, you know, being prepared for um, their, those employment opportunities as you're going out. And the ongoing uh, journey around learning in the, in the um, graduate space. Um, so the, it's built on activism, it's many quests that people can achieve throughout their student journey that build up to a profile. And that profile, and I'll talk about that in a moment, 
So this is the sort of student quote profile where they're seeing themselves and they're starting to see some of the quests that they've done reflected back to them and they're taking on more quests and it could be, you know, well, I don't have much experience or I don't have much on my CV so I'm going to focus on uh, some volunteer work to help flesh that out. Or it could be I've got heaps of experience but my marketability is terrible, I've got no social media presence, etc. so I'm going to focus on that. Um, but the bit about employers, um, I'll flick through this, uh, is that it produces a, a profile and we're going to trial this in a couple of years at the end of the semester. But the idea that an employer can log in and see graduates who are going to graduate in maybe six weeks time uh, and they can select the areas of interest and see the students who are going to be flowing out and look to engage with them for recruitment. So this is a way, so rather than so it's twofold. On Career Hub, you can advertise your job, students can go in and see and engage with your job. And here, you can engage directly with the talent pool that's coming out. Um, as I say, it's going to be trialled in a couple of uh, area, limited areas at the end of semester one. And then we would look to see how successful that was. But we have presented this to a number of uh, employer network sessions. And um, people are very excited about this. So it's just like a landing page. So it's got your LinkedIn link, it's got your CV, it's got a little bit of an example of the work you've done. It's got a sense of how much you've done to develop yourself in the MyGP space. A uh, sense of purpose. You can go directly to LinkedIn from here, directly to their Facebook or Twitter profile if they want. If you've got any portfolio, it all comes off this landing page. So the idea is, oh, I'll see if they've got that page there or not, maybe it's just another example, so that's somebody in a trade environment, a bit of an example of their work, gives you a bit of a sense of who they are. Um, no, and I haven't got it there, but the, it would be the employer um, page when you go and log in and you can see the students, you can select the ones you really want to revisit and go back and have a look at and ideally recruit them before you finish. Excellent, thank you. Um, ladies. We're actually um, a bit tight on time. I was just wondering if, if there was anything else you'd like to add. Just wrapping up, uh, the, this slide really just goes into uh, what I would like to build into and get some actions from out of today. And so my role being stakeholder engagement for South Canterbury and for the wider Canterbury region is me, I'm very interested in talking to you as a group again at a, at a later date and forming a relationship with you formally to partner in the bringing together key stakeholders in your community. We would like, we would have a vested interest in the educational portion of those conversations, obviously, um, but from a workforce development um, area, I, I imagine that that would be something that you may be interested in. Um, Recently, uh, in the Chief Executive's report, we actually had a labour force analysis survey that's been done at the moment. So um, that possibly is something that would fit in after that. Would that be correct, Mr Chief Executive? Um, but again, we're going to break for afternoon tea shortly, and we can certainly explore that over afternoon tea. Would you like to go through the rest of this? So, uh, well, as part of what I'd like to suggest is that uh, we, would, we would host these and we would do the administration behind organising and putting together the, the meetings themselves. And, uh, but we, what we would like to do is see a, um, a representative from the council to chair these meetings and, um, and, and we would be working with you on um, bringing together a broad mix of stakeholders. So essentially that's the, the bones of, of the idea and so next step would be how you might like to go about this and is that something you'd be interested in? Not something I can answer right now. It would probably, um, let's break for afternoon tea and we can chat around here and, and I would be in touch. <coughs> but thank you very much for the presentation. Please don't leave. We are just about to do the, uh, sorry, councillors, are there any questions before I move on to acknowledging new staff and long serving staff? No, and the questions are all reserved for afternoon tea. We'll be very brief and then we'll be down the end of the hall. So it's my great pleasure. Thank you very much. So um, it's my great pleasure to welcome uh, Cindy Meadows, who I understand was an RA tutor at one stage as well. <laughs>
um, to present to Council new and long serving staff, and then we'll break for after that. Today I have uh, the pleasure of welcoming uh, Paul Churchill, who's over here. Um, he's our new Three Waters Compliance Officer. Um, and Paul um, has started with us and he's in about, what, the third or fourth third week with us. So um, you'll see him out at afternoon tea and have a chat to Paul. He's, a, he's a enjoying his time, I'm sure. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Thanks. Um, and I also have the pleasure of asking Rebecca Willens along. Uh, Rebecca is um, celebrating five years service with us. So um, I've got a brief on Rebecca, just a little bit. So started on the 4th of February 2013 as a part-time senior planner. Um, and speaking to her manager, Rebecca is a highly respected member of the planning team and also the wider organisation. Rebecca gets involved around uh, the district and her and her husband uh, work alongside uh, some of our community events up in Peter's area. And um, and I just want to thank Rebecca for her current continuous service and look forward to many, many, many more years of her serving with us. So thank you so much and congratulations. Thank you. And councillors, we have afternoon tea. Thank you very much.